right guys and gals I want to show you real quick uh, this little rest area I found pretty neat it's kind of like if you've seen the ones in Texas my ears hurt I had that old uh, communication thing in my ear anyway Traveling down the road, the lens is filthy, hang on. How's that? Is that better? <laughs> I got in the sun, I seen all that dirt stuff on it. What was that saying? Oh yeah. If you've been through Texas, you've probably seen little here, let me just turn you turn you around. You've probably seen little rest areas like this. Texas has these little pull-offs, I don't know what to call them. Elmer, oh, oh, I don't even know how you gonna say that memorial rest area. Hmm. But anyway, back to what I said, I got sidetracked. You know, Texas has a little pull off picnic table, like park type rest areas. I haven't seen too many. I'm still in Minnesota. I haven't seen too many around here. I some had power one time. But uh, I'm sure they're around. I just haven't, you know, in my travels, haven't really noticed them. I think I've seen one, in, but it was inside the uh, city limits of a small community, a little farm town. This is out in the middle of nowhere. Um, yeah, there's nothing. Well, I know there's nothing about 45 to 50 miles that way. Cause I just I was sweating if I was going to make it or not. On gas is what I'm talking about. Yeah, I forgot y'all can't read my minds. But, um... Anyway, the wind's been ripping all day. Oh, and by the way, I got gas. Stopped at one of them Centrex. Centrex, how do you say it? Like, it looks like a farm place, you know, but the public can buy gas there too. Or at least this one you can. But anyway, get off that subject. This is a pretty nice little park. Rest area, whatever you want to call it. it makes me think of a park. Bathrooms not so great the wind's still ripping today i'm beating down miles trying to get to my next camp i've got some things going to i didn't forgot the name of it i'm bad with names there's a water pump hand pump but uh i stayed there oh man i don't know i've probably been in this the one i'm headed to i've probably stayed there the past four years five years whenever i come up in this area i know it well i know this living off the motorcycle full-time thing you're supposed to be you know super stealth camping and pulling up and camping in the walmart basket return and you know i i'm just not that good yet i'm using free campgrounds and uh you know, this, this, I don't know what to say. I'm just using spots I'm comfortable with at the moment. I guess I could say that. Uh, I'll get there, people. I'll get there. This is not as easy as it looks. Scooter Tramp Scotty and, and Brent from Back Roads and Backwaters, they make this look so easy. I've watched a lot of other people, but I'm sure y'all know them. I watched Joe Raider, Dirty Motorcycle Vagabond, and I don't know, I'm not going to say the name of my mom. There's a bunch of people I watch. They make this look so easy. Living off a motorcycle. Which that part is. I mean, as far as that goes, that's no different than using my RV. You know, set up camp or my car camping. No different. But as far as finding places to sleep, they make it look so easy. Pretty uh, Yeah, you see in their videos, they're just riding down the road and, oh, let's pull off here and throw a tent up <laughs> I just I'm not finding it that easy I'm gonna be honest with you uh, I, I found a few spots okay the last video I think it is whichever one I'm ranting and raving in it might be this one I don't know I'm just taking little clips here and there and haven't put them all together yet but anyway in one of them I'm rant, ranting and raving about how uh, well, I'm just not going to get all that, repeat all that, but I just haven't been finding good spots. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Now today, 
don't know. I'm trying to think if I'm going to put this in the next video or the last one. The one, I don't know, because I haven't gotten none of them up yet. I haven't uh, edited anything and put anything up. But anyway, I'm getting my brains going 100 mile an hour. I, uh, I, today, I've been, I done did about 300 miles today. And I've stopped, it's taken all day long too, because I've been stopping a lot. Every time I see a patch of woods, or, you know, what I think is an old abandoned farm or something, I've been stopping and checking them out, and they just haven't, they haven't been working for me. Because I, I would, instead of going to this, uh, spot I'm going to now, I was trying to find something to just go ahead and throw up camp today, you know, get in the habit of doing that, instead of using these campgrounds, which is fine. I understand I can use campgrounds, but I want to get good at picking out random spots you know in the woods so two of them i stopped at today i sat there and, and made the executive call that i couldn't get my bike in there or it wouldn't be smart to try because i'd get in there and get stuck one of them was soft dirt or you know had grass and everything but it's, the ground was soft it was flat going to it it's a perfect patch of woods i walked in there and if anybody knows Minnesota, these little pop-up woods are everywhere. They're not very big. Usually an old house or plantation has been there, a farm or whatever. And, uh, but the rest of the trees you see are the straight line. There's no woods there, it's just a straight line. There's snow breaks, wind breaks. So these little patches of square patches of woods are usually where a farm used to be or an old barn or something like that was at one time. So back to the point, this one I stopped at, uh, it, uh, it, it was pretty decent going to it. It was flat, you know, high grass, but I felt like I could get through there without turning me over, you know, grabbing the foot pegs and all that. But when you got to the wooded area, it kind of sloped down, and then it went to a perfect spot. It's like flat. I believe an old silo or barn or something been there. It's that slope going down. I don't think I could have got the bike down there and got it turned around and got back out. I've got a big old heavy bike. It's not as big as scooter tramps, but it's 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 700. Well, with nothing on it, it's 740 pounds according to the tag. And I probably got about 80 pound of gear on there, and then me. So it's a, you know I, I weigh 220 pounds, so you know we're over a thousand pounds pretty much. That's a lot of, you know, metal to be wrestling around, trying to get turned around. And my luck, I'll drop it and everything. It just I decided I wasn't going to do it. And then I stopped at another another spot that uh, similar, you know, there's a square patch of woods. We're going to work our way down here. There's something I want to show you. But anyway, it's similar. There's a square patch of woods. And... Uh, without seeing it, it's hard to describe it. It had a path going in. I'm assuming at one time it was a road. I don't know. But it looked like it, looked like it hadn't been used. Oh, excuse me. I got indigestion. It looked like it hasn't been used in 40 or 50 years. And I'm being serious about that. It was. You could tell at one time somebody had been driving through there. But it has been a long time. But I didn't take it because getting in the woods it wasn't the greatest uh spot you know it would have worked but it wasn't the greatest and the road going in was kind of rutted like maybe old tractors have been running out there so i skipped on that one then i rode some more and seen uh from the from the road you know out here in minnesota you can see forever and i can see there's no barn you know the roof of it in the woods and you can tell from the road it was all decayed and falling down and everything and it had a little gravel drive going back there to it so i turned actually I had to turn around and pass it up come back and took that little gravel drive and it, it actually went to somebody's house yeah the old barn was there it's all just the cap how you say that word it was falling down it had some old equipment and old junky stuff around it and I parked my bike, you know, bike's loud, got uh, Cobra pipes on it. And I parked it, hey, what's this? I'm gonna continue walking. No, it stops. It looked like it might have could have went around there. 
But uh, yeah, so I'm walking around the old barn looking, trying to maybe pick a spot out for my tent. And I looked through the tree line, and it probably wasn't, well, about like this right here. I'm using my GoPro, so I don't know what shows up. But like, I could tell the grass was maintained. That's, you know, that's kind of weird. Oh, I didn't know that was down there. I wonder how you get to that bridge. Let's go over and see if we can find it. But anyway, I, I tiptoed through them, through them trees and got to that place where the grass is maintained. It was maintained because there's a brand new house sitting there. Luckily, I don't think anybody was home, but I eased on out of there and left. So, you know, all that long story just to say that I haven't been having no luck with this pulling off the road and throwing a tent up in the woods. But I'm practicing. I'll get there. Oh, yeah, we're going to try to find that bridge after we look at this thing. I'll keep practicing. Keep looking. And uh, we'll get it figured out, folks. We'll get it. You know, I'm new at this. You don't expect to get it right the first time, every time. But anyway, enough rambling on about that. Let's check out this thing. This is actually what I saw from the road. And then I noticed the rest of it. It says the Viking sword. The citizens of Ulan, I think I'm saying that right, U-L-E-N, Brent, no. Ulan dedicates this monument to the venturesome Vikings who whose broken sword was unearthed three miles west of Ulan in 1911. The sword of great historical significance is similar to those in common usage in Europe during the 14th century. All honor to its mystical history. Oh, so they found a Viking sword. Where did I see that? Three miles west of this town I just went through. That's pretty neat. That'd been something I could have checked out. Anyways, I'm just rambling and walking. I'm going to go over here and try to find that bridge I just saw through the woods. Uh, taking a break off the bike, my old legs are tired. and Well, that was easy. Right here it is. Well, it's not the bridge. It looks like it's a walk way down to it. That's pretty cool. Let me go get my phone and keys and everything off the bike and we'll check that old bridge out. I'll be back in just a second. Alright, we're going to walk down to this bridge. Boy, it's rickety looking. <laughs> I don't know if I trust this or not. The weather's been, today has been perfect. Uh, 60, I don't forgot, 65, 68 degrees, something like that. Uh, like right now, it's perfect. As far as just walking around, it's not too hot. But riding a bike, the air's got a little chill to it, so I got my my summertime riding jacket on, which makes it perfect. It's very comfortable. It ain't too hot. The bike likes it. I like it. This is neat. Oh, I see what's going on. There's a park over there. I'm sure there's another way to get into it. I see some kids' playground equipment and picnic tables. I probably passed that up coming by there. I just didn't notice it. This is pretty neat. Not seeing any fish. Oh, yeah, I do. Bunch of bait fish. Or that's what I call them. Little minnows and whatnot. I'm not seeing no big ones. But anywho, I'm not going to dally around here too long because I made a mistake last night. Or probably going to be the last video you saw messing around and goofing off and pushing myself too far and had to roll in at 7 30 8 o'clock at night in the misting rain and cold and fog and try to find a camp because i'm a newbie and don't know what i'm doing yet lesson learned i won't make that mistake tonight which as of right now i've got plenty of time to get where i'm going several hours of daylight left and i'm i don't know probably an hour away something like that i have to look but as of right now plenty of time but i can't you know keep messing around like this or it'd be the same situation be rolling in there in the dark and it's i'm a lot further north it's supposed to be according to weather app it's supposed to be 44 degrees at night so 
I want to get on in there, get camp set up, get my tent up, and I want to get there a little bit early just in case something, for some odd reason, I you know can't stay there. Give me a little bit of time to find something else. Anyway, folks, that's what's going on. I'm out here doing. This has been on my bucket list for years. Uh, I've been talking about it. You can go back to my old videos. Two or three years ago, four years ago. I've been talking about this forever. Uh, cross country on a motorcycle and living off of it. Now this ain't going to be... Alright, here we go. Rambling. I'm going to live off the motorcycle full time, but it's not going to be forever. I'm probably going to do this... Well, my initial thoughts was I'd do it for one year. Just get out here and see... You know, I've been all over the United States. Between my trucking and traveling in an RV for however long I've been doing it. I haven't seen everything, but I've seen a lot. But I do know from experience, you uh, everything looks different from the seat of a motorcycle. And that's the reason I want to do it. I'm kind of retracing some of my steps. Uh, and I'm seeing things I've never, never seen before. Have I got that sun right in your face? I probably do, don't I? I want to fire my director. He didn't tell me that. But, um, yeah, I'm, like, this road I'm on right now, I've actually been down this highway, oh, man, half a dozen times, at least ten times, and I'm seeing things I, I never, you know, I haven't seen before. Like, I'm, I didn't even know this place is here, and I probably passed it five times. But, um, oh, back to what I was going to say, um, yeah, I'm going to live off the motorcycle for at least a year. That's my goal. Um. I never intended for it to be a lifetime deal. Now, depending on how this year goes, I might do it two years. I don't know. Might do it a year and three months. I, I you know, I don't. I, I, right now, I don't know. And I am I'm not even sure if I'll do it for a whole year. But that's my goal. It's been on my bucket list to travel around the United States on a bike. And I figured to go everywhere: East Coast, West Coast, down south, uh, Texas, Florida. You know, all up in there. Up in the north here, here comes the sneeze again. Uh, I figured it'd take me about a year to do it. Because, you know, I'm not rich. I still got to work a little bit. Make a few dollars. So, we'll check that out. Uh, life is beautiful. Embrace it. I agree 100%. I agree 100%. But anyway, so... I'm gonna schedule myself for a year, try to commit to it. Possibly if I if I have fun and I'm really just really into it and I'm getting good at it, um, maybe even make it two years. I don't know, but it'll never be. I don't, I don't have no intentions of doing it for 25, 30 years, or whatever. You know, there's other things I want to do. I've been watching Brent. I know I keep saying Brent, 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 but I'm hung on his channel now. Shanty boat thing, which I seen his shanty boat videos years ago. I've been starting my research. I want to do that. Not necessarily float the whole length of the waterways of the United States. Well, we'll get into this on another video. I want to do the shanty boat thing, but I want to build a kind of a big one, kind of like what he's doing right now, because it's going to be my my home. I'm not getting any younger. Definitely getting older, getting more aches and pains, and. I need to start thinking about, you know, where I'm going to rest my old bones here in a few years. So that's on the bucket list too, but I've got it last because that's going to be kind of the end of it, so to speak. So but we'll, we'll get down to another video. Right now, let's just enjoy this, this awesome bike trip we're on and living off the bike. And I'll say this and I'm going to shut the camera off and go jump on a bike. It's not as easy as it looks, folks. If y'all are thinking about doing this, do your research, or at least do more than I did, because the camping part is super easy. You know, all you need is some good equipment, way to cook, nice sleeping, you know, sleeping bag, whatever you need. That's easy. The bike, easy. As long as you know, you know about bikes, as far as working on them. I got troubles right now. Got a, you know, I think I showed you someone knocked my tail light out. Now I got a short somewhere. I lost one of my floodlights on the front. But anyway, um, 
as long as you know a little bit about bikes and maintenance and all that, that part's easy. The part's hard, and I just learned this the hard way, reality check. This stealth camping or whatever you want to call it, just pulling off the road and throwing your tent up, that's not easy. And I'm sure I passed up 300 spots that Scotty would have used and probably Brent and all them, but I just, <laughs> I got to get better at it. So I think after this journey right here, or not after this journey, but after today, I'm going to, where I'm going to, I'm going to camp for a couple of days, two, at least two. I just I got some work I need to do. I need to try to get that light fixed on the bike. But when I take off again, I'm going to stop. I don't care if I stop six times every mile. Every time I see a tree, I'm going to stop and see if I can camp there. Uh, I got to start getting better at that part. Because these free campgrounds, I mean, they're nice and everything, but, and actually, you know, they're not costing any money, so I don't see what it hurts, but I want to do the, I want to do it the Scooter Tramp Scotty style. And, and you know, Brent does it too. I've watched his videos. He, he just pops in the woods somewhere and throws his tent up. I don't know. I'll get there, folks. I'll get there. All right, I'm going to shut this camera down. We're going to get in the bike. Or not in the bike, but on the bike and finish these miles. We'll see y'all here in a little bit. Well, guys and gals, we made it. Um, actually got daylight to spare. But this is where I'm on camp. I'm probably going to spend about two days here. You know, I've been burning down miles and I don't know. I don't even know where I'm going. Why am I going so fast? It's just a habit. And when I travel, I just, I think I got to burn miles down. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to set camp up here. I'm going to. Look around, you know, try to find me a pretty level spot. Um, more than likely, I'll probably get over that little corner right there. But Red River's over there. It's, it's You can't see on this old GoPro, but the ground drops off right there. That's the Red River. And, uh, yeah, this is going to be home for at least two days. So, anyway, I think I'm going to end this one right here. I still got it. I'm gonna set up camp, cook me something to eat, and get settled in before the night gets here and do some relaxing. And uh, yeah, man, my whole bike's filthy. I got to clean this thing up. But anywho, you know what I say, anywho. All right, good morning, guys. <clears throat> Let me get turned around here. I just got up. Ooh, that sun's bright. Well, I didn't just get up. I've been up a couple of hours, but I just got out and started moving around. Um, as you've seen in the last video, or I, I think it's the last video, I don't know. I haven't uh, been taking all these little clips and shots and everything, and I haven't got them put together. Just something on the lens again. Hang on, folks. How's that? I'm not very good at this Hollywood production stuff, but... Let me turn you around here. Uh, if I hadn't already showed you, I don't, I can't remember. I can't keep up all this. But here's camp. Uh, made some coffee. I ain't really woke up yet. But then you know, there's my tent. And got all my gear in there. There's the motorcycle. I'm not speaking of coffee, I'm gonna go ahead and grab it and drink it. I had to put my little snack on top of it. Keep the old bees out of it. Mm. Man, that's good. But I'm up here uh, north. I guess I'm trying to think northwest, I guess you could say, Minnesota. Let me get some more coffee. Ooh, that's good. I got here yesterday, I think it was, this campground here. Maybe two days ago. I, I, I don't know. I don't keep up with it. It's a beautiful campground. It's a little chilly this morning, too. I'll get used to it, but after being that 100 degree weather with 5,000% humidity, it's a little chilly. It's, I looked at my phone about an hour ago and it was 42 degrees, but the sun hadn't quite come up yet, so I would say it's a little warmer now. It's probably jumped up in the 50s, probably. But anywho, 
This is going to be camp. Oh, I'm spilling my coffee. That's, I can't do it. I can't do it no more. I just can't do it. All right. Let me get drink some of this. I've got my cup so full. I'll tell you what, guys. Here's what I'm going to do. Let me finish my coffee. I, I'm trying to do this with one hand. I'm going to shut this camera off. Let me finish my coffee, then we'll come back, all right? Sound like a plan, friend? Okay, guys. And gal galettes. Galettes. I got my coffee drink. Feel spunky and ready to go. Got my shorts on so my white legs are showing. Anyway, back to what we was talking about earlier. Camp's right over there. Well, you can't really see it, but in the shadow of them trees, camp. There's the Red River. Some of y'all people that's been with me a long time ought to recognize this spot. Because I always, I don't know, I shouldn't, I was going to say travel the Red River. I don't really travel the Red River as far as being on it, but a long route of it. But you ought to recognize this spot. If you haven't, just think, I come here every year on my migration north. Now usually, two places I always camped. I always camped right here, and I think once, can't remember exactly where, I think once I might have been, that's where I'm camped right now, I might have been right over there. Can't 100% remember, but I'm usually always getting right here because, uh, well, it's not going to show on this GoPro, but see all the tall weeds? Or right there is the Red River, runs up through there. But let me show you a few things about this area. And they'll probably jog your memory. You'll start remembering it. And for the ones who haven't been with me very long or just joined the channel, this is, I'm in Crookston, Minnesota. And this park slash campground is called, uh, I always get the name wrong. We're going to go up here and look at the sign because I never do get the name right. I think it's Trinity Crossing, Trinity, something like that. Uh, just let me pause this because I don't want to make it a 12 hour video of me walking this gravel road, but we're gonna go up here, get the sign so I get the name right. We'll go look at a few little cool things here that should jog your memory. See, that's why I always... <laughs> oh. Old Crossing, Trendy Park, historic site, Red Lake County. No camping. When did they start this? Closed 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Huh. Well, I'm going to pack up and leave. I, I didn't see this yesterday. We've always been able to camp here. Huh. Well, <laughs> looks like we may be moving camp today, folks. Well, that's kind of okay. That changes plans. Well, let's go ahead and check out the sites while we're here. Old. This is a pretty cool statue. It looks like they've redone it. Might have painted or something. Road Crossing Trinity Memorial. We got one more little thing I'm gonna go look at down here then. Then uh I guess I gotta make some plans for today. That's uh see when I come in yesterday, I've been camping here for man, four or five years. I don't know. I never really kept track, but this is actually listed as a campground. And now, well, got to make some plans today, it looks like, folks. But I'm going to pause this camera and we're going to walk down that direction. And I'll, I'll show you something that's probably going to really jar your memory, then you'll remember this place. But hang on, we'll get down there in just a minute. This is a little more information on the area. This is actually a new plaque. Um, I haven't, I haven't, I've seen, I know the story because they had uh, a sign here with the information, but I've never actually saw this plaque. 
This area is the Red River Ox Cart Trails. And they claim, not that, that's just a berm because the river gets high, but they claim the trail run used to run right through there. That's what a local told me a few years ago. For some 40 years in the mid 19th century, two wheel wooden carts were drawn mostly by slow moving oxen. They traveled south from Winnipeg along the Red River to St. Paul, Minnesota, 400 miles to the southeast. Trade by the Red River ox carts from both U.S. and Canadian towns to St. Paul began in 1833 as a means to compete with the Hudson Bay Company's route into the region from the north. Within a few years, carts moved thousands of dollars worth of furs, buffalo robes, and pin, 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 I don't know how you say that word, but it means buffalo meat, to St. Paul. Then they returned with dry goods, tools, and machines. The six foot high wheels of the ox carts were held together by wooden pegs and rawhide. The ungreased wheels of the passing carts made a loud noise that could be heard for miles. Driven by American mixed blood and French Canadian mint, mints, 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 who wore red sashes, beaded caps, and moschkins. The colorful images of the frontiersmen remain to this day. In St. Paul, the summer arrival of hundreds of carts loaded with goods attracted far reaching trade that made St. Paul a commercial center. So, here's a mini map. Here's South Dakota, North Dakota, Ontario. Oh crap, all right guys, <laughs> I about dropped the camera. That's Canada, but I don't know what MB stands for. Minnesota, and we're right here. To give you a better idea, if you went west and maybe a, about 30 miles north that's fargo north dakota but anyway i'm gonna walk right over here and show you something that my long time viewers you're gonna recognize <clears throat> i think the last time i showed you was probably two three years ago but you should remember you know me being at this place And for your new viewers, this is pretty cool to see. Okay, guys and girls, well, I, have, I found me another spot. As you can see, I got electricity. I've got camp all set up. Bikes around back covered up. I um, I went ahead and moved. This is a campground. Of course, it's a paid campground. Fifteen dollars a night. Um, I don't really want to be paying for campgrounds, but 
ten dollars is my cutoff, but this one here's got showers, laundry, and electric. So I went ahead and paid the money. Because if you've seen in the last clip, um, I plan on staying at that campground or what used to be a campground for a couple of days and getting caught up on my work, uh, editing and all that. Woke up this morning to a surprise, as you've seen, so I had to move. And again, I knew about this place. I've been here before. I am in Thief River Falls, Minnesota. Beautiful town, beautiful town. Got the Red River running right through it. We're going to get out and explore tomorrow. I'm going to be here for two days, guaranteed. Good Lord willing. It's paid for. I shouldn't have to pack up and leave. So I'm really going to enjoy having the showers and the laundry and all that because I've blowing through my clothes. There's something else I gotta work on. I, 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 I try to keep my clothes cleaner. But um, yeah, I'm gonna get caught up on editing, get these videos up, and probably gonna still relax. It's already 3.30. I'm probably gonna go ahead and relax the rest of the day. So I'm gonna end this video right here. But um, we'll get out tomorrow and we'll explore this area. I've been here before, but it's a pretty neat little town. We'll get out and explore, so. Until I see you guys next time, thank you for coming along. Say hello to all my friends, subscribers, new subscribers. Uh, just anybody might be dropping by. Appreciate you stopping in and visiting. And, uh, yeah. Until I see you next time. God bless you.